Hi there, um, welcome back to CNC Modeler. Um, recently I've been turning quite a lot of acetyl plastic. Uh, it's also known as Delrin um, under a trade name. Um, so anybody that's turned this stuff, um, you kind of know that you get lots of this. This is the stringy swarf or um, chips that come off and uh, usually they end up getting wrapped around the chuck and you can't see anything that you're doing and they're a pain in the proverbial. Um, so I did a bit of digging on the internet and uh, found a way that works for me to turn without getting too much mess and um, so I'm going to share that with you. So we'll go on to uh, Fusion, do a bit of CAD and CAM just to set up a bit of a demo and then we'll come down and watch the videos and then um, just uh, sum up at the end. So uh, I'll see you upstairs on the computer in a minute. Cool. Um, what I need to do is show you guys how I created the CAD for this um, to be able to do the demo. So if I come in here and turn on the sketches, um, then you can see uh, I basically drew, just drew an ex a circle and then I extruded that into a body just to get myself something uh, to turn around. If we go into manufacturer and if we uh, just generate those. Okay, so um, what you've got here is you've got the body and then you've got the um, stock. So if we go into edit, you can see that the, um, I'm using my Nova turn. I'm uh, yeah, uh, basically doing that. Um, and I've got uh, a one millimeter larger stock than my model, and the backside offset I've got 20 millimeter, and that's just to make it more sort of work better in my head because it's how it's laid out in the lathe. And then post processing, I've just got some notes, and that's that. Now, the, the thing that is, when you turn an acetal, if you do a standard rocking pass um, just cancel out a minute if you're a standard roughing pass what you get is um, basically something like this comes in and it takes a single cut and that's that and that's when you get the bird nesting sometimes you don't if you're lucky um, uh, but a lot of times you do so rather than that I've gone for this. So also, when you're doing that, um, you tend to push the um, swarf back, or the chips, whatever you want to call it, back onto the chuck. Um, and again, so you get this net bird's nest built up around here. So now if we go onto the second profile, and we simulate that, and as you can see what I've done here, is I've gone that way to actually try and push the um, swarf or the chips away from the chuck. So that helps a bit. Uh, but what actually helps a lot is if you go, uh, if we go close the simulation and if we go back into the actual details here, so it's over. So um surface speed i'm using is 22 meters per minute just in case anybody's interested the internet seems to suggest that um that 11 meters per minute is good um but i my uh lathe hasn't got the torque at low speeds to be able to turn so i don't i i've doubled it basically and it still turns well and the surface finish i'm getting is good so that's fine uh if we go down to the back here so instead of going front to back, i.e. that way, I'm going back to front to push it off. But I'm also using pecking. And what pecking does is every two millimeters as it comes along the face of the part, it backs off 0.4 of a millimeter and effectively breaks that chip. And so that helps a lot in terms of breaking things up. So if I go back into simulation, and if we turn off the stock, if we come in here, I've 
show points. We should be able to see, here we go, these points. Oh. And what's happening is as the uh, the lathe tool's coming along, it's going down to the, uh, coming to there, then backing off, then going on to there, then backing off, then going on to there, and backing off. And so um, that gives you, just breaks the long stringy chips up that uh, you normally see um, build up when you're machining acetyl plastic, or Delrin is the um, one of the brand names for it. So if we close that, and then uh, literally all I've done is I've created, I've post-processed both of these to separate things, and uh, that's what we're going to run on the lathe. So let's switch over to that. So let's just look at the first pass. This is the um, uh, set of code that just uh, cuts the way you normally would. Um, as you can see, you get loads of um, small chips building up on the workpiece and it turns into a right mess and you can imagine if you make three or four or five passes how that's just going to keep building up because it's not going anywhere and uh, you know, if you were on a manual lathe that would be quite dangerous if you whipped around. As you can see uh, you get a nice big lump of well jammed on there uh, stuff and uh, yeah not helpful course when you're videoing for YouTube um, the only time the the, uh, the swarf behaves itself is um, yeah right then and uh, I think that's the first time I've ever cut a seal and it's actually come off nice so this is the other way of doing it so now I've just uh, turned the, some suction on as well so I've got my shot back going and as you can see uh, the combination of just the pecking and the shot back pulls all that swarf away and you get a nice clean workpiece so I'm quite happy with that and that's the way I've been making parts for the last uh, week or so. So I hope you found that interesting, um, it's been working for me, I've made a couple of parts for my brother and uh, yeah it's all going good. So if you do like the video please do press that like button. Uh, it makes a big difference. YouTube uh, show more people my videos if uh, more people like them. Uh, also, there's only about 2% of my uh, people that watch my videos that are actually subscribed. So if you could subscribe, that would be brilliant. And uh, hit that notification bell, you'll get uh, notifications when I post new, new material. So hopefully like you like my stuff. Uh, if you do, there's some more videos at the end of uh, this one. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again next time. Cheers.